G'day, Sparlow here, and welcome to another episode of the Thursday Night Fishing Hub live stream. And don't forget that you can get involved by making comments or asking questions in the live chat down the side of your screen while we're on tonight. But if you happen to be watching the show afterwards on one of our YouTube channels, well, you can also post questions down underneath, and I guarantee that we will get to you in time. The title of tonight's live stream is The Lure of Fishing, and not surprisingly, it's all about fishing with lures, one of my favourite kinds of fishing. Now, I know a lot of people are still a little bit daunted and put off by lure fishing. They can catch fish on bait, but they find that they struggle with artificials. But look, there's nothing particularly magical or mystical about it. As I tried to explain in this very brief video clip that I put up on YouTube just recently, Look, all lures are, are artificial baits, good fun to fish with. Some people don't enjoy dealing with messy, smelly bait, and they prefer to use lures, which are really just imitation or artificial baits. You can use soft ones like this, or hard ones like these. Whatever type of lure you choose, you need to make it look like something that's alive when it's in the water. And to do that, you'll need to use your rod and reel to give it movement and action. It's a bit like putting on a puppet show to fool the fish, and it's lots of fun. That idea of putting on a puppet show with your lure is one that I'll be coming back to tonight. But the concept isn't mine. It's one that my wife Jo frequently talks about in her presentations. And I reckon it's a particularly apt analogy. Anyway, we've got a great lineup of presenters for you tonight. We've got Shroom back again. He's becoming a regular. And so too is Robbie Alexander from Robbie Fishing. He's got a fantastic segment towards the end of the program, so make sure you hang in here and watch. We don't have a prize to give away tonight. Hopefully we will again next week, but the prize for you is the information we're going to share and the tips that we're going to offer to you. But first of all, let's jump in the Fishing Hub DeLorean and shoot back to the future, back into the old Rex Hunt fishing archives from the television days, and travel to Croker Island in the top end of Australia where Rex bushy and gun fishing guide Lance Butler are chasing barra in some shallow rocky water. This is really interesting stuff. Stay tuned. <laughs> morning on the west coast of a magnificent island called Croker, facing the magnificent Timor Sea. And the human broom and I have come out here on the mid-tide on the flood in search of some saltwater barramundi, young man. I'll probably fall out of the boat if I get a hook up, Rexy. I just really love the salties. They're just so fat, silver and aggressive. Our man Lance here has had a lot of experience in these salties. They mill around here at this time of the year, waiting for a heavy rain and a breakthrough from the billabong and the estuaries to start running to get a bit of the old action to play mummies and daddies. But they're out here and they're hungry. I am too, folks. I'm hungry for a salty. Come away 
from those rocks. Come away from those rocks. Come with me, folks. We've got a bit of work to do here. And why I'm so really anxious is that we're over the top of an oyster bed. And I tell you what, if I was up on the south coast of New South Wales, I'd be eating them. But out here, this is where a lot of fish are. Now, this is a barramundi. Actually, I'll get him Amazing, there. amazing to get barra in the middle of the ocean here. Oh, come on. And out he comes. And look Body. at that. Look at that. Wowee. I tell you what, <clears throat> Bushy, there is just something about barra in the salt water in the sea. They are just a lot more streamlined. No, I'll give you a look at them. It really streamlined, don't they? Just that fell should out. just come out just so easy. I'll let you do that. Just, just watch out. the lure. But oh, did he slam it? Wow, we nice looking fish. Nice looking fish. Thought he was bigger than he was, but Land said by Jingo, once they go bang in the ocean, they really put on a little bit of a. Just well, chrome, aren't they? Yeah, they are chrome. Sensational. And you'll see that yellow tail. That's a bit of a dead giveaway that she's a full-on ocean barramundi. Yeah. Oh, oh, what a beautiful fish, Bushy. All right, I'll spear him in, Rexy. Yeah, mate. There See you later. He's away. Well, how about that, folks? You know, I never tire of this, Bushy. I tell you what, every time we go to a new spot, it just goes to show you've got the guide, you get the local knowledge. I would have driven past here because I thought I was going to run aground. What we're trying to do here is just bump right down over these oyster rocks with the lure and hopefully a fish will just come out from the side of it and go bang. And I think I might have even had a tap then. I'm not sure whether I just hit an oyster rock or whether it was a fish, but we'll find out. Yep, that's it. I go on. Oh, it's a barra. It's a nice barra. It's a nice barra. It's what we want. Come on, away from that rock. Oh, hey, there he is. Go on to the boat and turn. No. There he comes. Yeehaw! Yes! Hoo -hoo -hoo. Thank you. What a nice fish. Ooh. See if we can get the hooks out of this one. Boy, we took a few casts, but. He is a lovely fish. Well, there we go, look at that, a chrome bar. Solid fish, not a monster, but a very solid fish. And when you catch them around these shallow oyster rocks, they certainly get you going. Boy, oh boy. All right, now there's a local tradition up in these areas. It's when the guide says, Bushy, if you let that fish go and we've got nothing for dinner, you will never come here again. This one is not going back, folks. He's going in the boat. <laughs> Good on you, Bushman. Isn't he great? Perseverance, he mentioned during that particular segment. And he's been here with myself for an hour and a half, just on the other side of the tide, and we knew something might happen. A couple of early fish were good for you, folk, but we do put in the time, and so many people say, is it always good fishing? Well, the answer is yes, but we mightn't always catch the fish. But it's great fun anyhow. Hope you're enjoying the show. Beautiful saltwater bar. 
breeding time in the top end and they'll be whirling around looking for their mates. A nice little fish. I can lift him up anyhow and show you. A nice little fish to end this segment. It's been a good segment. It really has. Look at this. Beautiful saltwater barra in all his glory or her glory later on. They are a unique species. They're lean and mean in the salt water. But as the billabongs fill up, they'll be just feeding on all of the magnificent food supply in this top end. So you come here, matey. You come here. A little bit of a comfort lift. And what a beautiful example of why we come to the top end. Ravenous. Beautifully sleek, uniquely Australian, our very own top end barramundi. It's good to have you along, folks. Too right, Rex. I'm inclined to agree. Fishing's always good, even if you catch something or you don't. And there's another saying that's along that same line of train of thought as well. How does it go again? Poor day's fishing beats a good day at work. I absolutely agree with that and if you guys do too make sure you hit that like button because that will help bring the show to the next level and guys what a way to kick off the show with that segment from Rex, Bushy and Lance fishing up in the Northern Territory chasing saltwater barramundi wow throwing those hard bodies look like some really colorful diving hard bodies there in and amongst those really rocky and really not, not not very nice terrain actually those oyster beds look like some really sharp rocks but that heavy structure there would certainly harbor some really nice barramundi and i certainly saw you extract um, plenty of nice fish from up that way and guys next up going to continue the show with another piece this time from me i'm going to be fishing the sydney harbour slash Parramatta river system or down in new south wales sydney city you guys know where that is. So we're going from the Northern Territory, heading down south to cooler waters. And down in this area where I'm from, flathead is one of the main species that you can target on lures. So in this next piece, I'm gonna be targeting them on soft plastic lures, soft plastic grub tails, and also on a suspending hard body as well. And in this particular session, I couldn't believe just throwing these lures out on the mud flat how effective that they could be. Well, I'm just, um, if you just saw that, uh, that's because I'm frothing just thinking about that fishing action. So, guys, I think I better stop babbling on about it right now because I'm getting too excited. Let's go check out the next piece right now. River. I am here right now. Check it out behind me. Winds, winds coming behind my back. It's pretty strong. Sun's out. Plan today is to chase some brim and flathead. I think there's gonna be some flathead out. The tide's pretty good over this shallow flat. And I've got a, I've got a few things. I might start off with the plastic first and see how we go. Very shallow along here. Should be Taylor. Here we go. On. Oh, no. Right in. That was a, that was a good hit. I gave it half a second because I saw there's like a ray or something out that way. There's a stingray just out there. Look at that. What a good flatty. Keep his head down. Oh, keep his head down. Oh, I pulled it. He's just there. Just pulled it. Oh, had a feeling something's going to go wrong. Had a feeling. Oh, wow. He's just right here still. I wonder if he'll take it again. I wonder. I'm guessing it was like probably in the mid 50s, pushing 60. It looked pretty good that size there wow wonder if i'll get another chance but i'm gonna have to retie first it just roughened up all my leader oh, it's getting the heart rate going now it's waking me up you know what i'd have to try here again it might be sitting here guys that flathead that big one there we go oh another hit i wonder if it was the same one flathead don't move very far once they settle down right that was right on the cast, wasn't it? Right. Right, that's two chances. I blew one of them. 
That rock looks like it's moving. It must be a ray. Is it moving? I'm not 100% sure. All right, I, I better concentrate. There we go. Hooked up, hooked up. All right, so drop the flathead. Next cast after rigging. Small one, all right, so this is a small flathead. That, it must be a ray, it's moving around. All right, here we go. Let's lift it, three, two, one. On the deck. Oh, yes. All right, just keep pressure so it doesn't fall down that gap. You know what? I think what I'll do is I'll go back and get my net after this. Here we go, guys. First fish of the day. Here we go. First, first fish of the day, guys. Small flathead. I'm going to make this quick because I want to have another chance at that big one that I dropped. Yeah. Light foot pressure. Let's get that pop. Pop. There we go. Out comes the Z-Man grub in the watermelon. As you guys know, I like. Let's just clear this line off, off him. Yeah, there we go. I'm just gonna flick him back in the water. Three, two, one, off you go, mate. There we go. Excellent. All right, so let's uh, have a quick check of the leader. All right, scuffed. All right, so I can't even have another cast just yet. And if the reed's high. So, I wonder if that big one's still there. I'm mucking around too much. Now watch me catch nothing now that I got the net back. All right, have another cast here. Double hop. There we go. On. Oh, I saw the fish flash on the top. Unbelievable. Might have been another flatty. Another cast. Hit the bottom. Double hop. There we go. Hit. That's a hit. There we go. Another hit. Grab it, please. It's just hitting it. Double hop. All right. It, it didn't grab on, so I'm going to put on some scent now and recast this one and let's see if it changes anything light layer of S-Factor squidgy scent squidgy S-Factor scent back out in the corner now let's watch on the bottom double lift double lift double lift there we go, ooh got a hit right away Double lift. All right, it's weird. Let's cast a little bit wider. They're hitting it. They're hitting the lure. I'm gonna just have to have another cast. A bit wider this time. That big one must be gone. Double lift. There we go, hit. Oh, yes, on. All right, second cast after putting on S-Factor. So it's another flatty, no doubt. This time I've got the net. Yes, there it is. It's just down there. Yeah, you know what, let's do it got the net let's see my netting skills oh that's horrible guys this is what you get when you don't use a net there we got it <laughs> oh yes right in there this is a bit small though not the big beast that we dropped it's gonna grab him right there okay so I should just be able to just push it there pop oh that's a that's a good pop oh what a pop and back she goes. Retied about three, four times now. Just got to keep doing it. Don't want to lose the next fish. So I haven't been here for more than 10 minutes. Give me another one, please. Give me that big one. If there are big ones, you may should just throw a bigger lure. But this is very fun with the light stuff. So I want to keep moving around and get, get some brim too, of course, or whiting. Lots on the table today, hopefully. All right, so no bite that time. That's the... Oh, no, I spoke too soon. I just got a big grab. Hit the bottom. So the flat is only grabbing it once and then... Oh, see that? That just came up. It came right up off the bottom. That is so good. I reckon I could cast anything and hook a flathead right here, right now. Anything. Mm. Oh, see that? use a hard body and hook up right here right now all right there's a little one that is just here that came shooting up there we go oh i dropped it dropped that one okay so i'm dropping lots you know what i'm gonna do i might switch to a hard body you know what guys just had to retie the lure anyway might as well give a hard body a go proof of principle let's see whether that that is the right way to think about it so let's try this 
dive or double clutch. All right, I'm gonna tie this on, but this might be the shortest leader ever. It's it's pretty short, probably about 30 centimeters at most. I can see my lead knot just right there, <laughs> but I'm a bit lazy, so we'll go with this first and try. All right, there we are. Let's give it a go, give it a run. Big long cast, we'll go out there, out that way. So this one's gonna hold in the water well in the wind especially too, so I, mean, I can slow roll it, but I do like twitching them too. They die pretty well. I shouldn't really have them fully engulfed by flathead. That's why I chose a longer profile. Now I just gotta hook one. Darting it, winding it. Come on, just need. There we go. Yes, on. Oh, yes, I still got him on, guys. Yes. Boom. Had a feeling. I just had a feeling that these were gonna work. Oh, Jesus. That's. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> it's fighting back. Flatted, flatted fights back. What's going on? It's right here. Is it big? No. Oh, okay, it's on the side. Right. No wonder. That was a weird tussle there. Weird tussle. Oh, don't get me under that. Whoa, it's not ready. She's not ready. She's hooked in the side. I think these um these dub clutches have the Daiichi hook, so they will bend and crack. But they're super duper sharp. All right, look at that. My net's just right here. This is like perfect. Let's just bring it in. Once it's tired, ah, oh, it doesn't want to come in, does it? It's coming in sideways, but it'll have to. Here we go. Shroom with the net net job. Three, two, one, in, in the net, <laughs> third one, yes guys, woo! <laughs> there we go ladies and gents, just as I said, boom, right out there, as I said, the plastics would work, the hard bodies would work too, just had to keep it off the bottom, I chose a longer profile in this hard body, because um, ultimately I didn't want it to completely engulf it, so that I would have a problem releasing it, but no problems here, she swiped it on the side and Look, I've got a big job just untangling this, but it's all good. There we go, she's out, out of my net. I'm just going to be real careful here. Just on the skin, there we go. Out comes the double clutch. This is the one I like. Very good in murky water. It's the only one I've got on me though, so I didn't really have a choice there with colours. There she is. Off you go, girl. Back in. Picking up my lure. I'm using a hard body here, so it is mandatory to check your leader. Make sure it's good. With a plastic, I can get a bit lazy. Everyone gets a bit lazy and sometimes you just don't check, you just throw it again. But with hard bodies, they cost quite a bit of coin, so I always check. Especially ones that catch fish. <laughs> right, here we go. So, short lead up made no difference. <laughs> Let's go belt this out, see if we can get another one. That time, that was in pretty close, so this one's a bit wider. Don't want to lose this hard body though. So, if anything, that one was hooked in the side, right? But we've noticed all day these flathead are pretty blind. They've been whacking my plastics and not hooking up. That's a bit of trash. Let me get that off. I felt that action of the lure just, you know, fall away there. So I knew that I had something on. Yeah, I'm on the bottom there, so it's very shallow. You can visually see that it's a lighter color up that way too. So it's not deep, but... Flathead don't mind shallow water. Oh, we go, what's this? Let's give it a twitch, keep it off the bottom. Come on, Flathead. There's a bait fish diving right here in, the, in this little pocket. Yeah, let's try, try here again. Try out here. Now, if you see that I'm twitching pretty quickly, but you don't need to, these just suspend. You could really just pause it for however long you want. Well, not indefinitely, but a couple, several seconds. They're not really going to float up all that quickly, being a suspending lure. But I'm just a little bit impatient. I know that there's flattered around, so I just want to put it in front of their face like this one that I've just got on. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, look at her. There she is. Oh, this one's in the mouth this time. This one's in the mouth. Okay. We got her right here. Right where we want her. Where's my net? Right over here. 
just fighting me every inch here. Yep, you're coming in. Look at that. Here's a net. Oh, here's a net. Here's a net. Boom. The next one, guys, right there. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Don't snap my rod. Good day on the plastics. And now, getting some good luck on the hard bodies. Thumbs up from me. Pliers. Let's go get this sorted. Look at that. Just in the in the skin deads. Like I said, these hooks are ridiculously sharp, but they will bend if you go too hard. So don't don't go too hard. At least not until um, you've had your fun here, and then you can go home and swap out trebles. But I think that should be okay. Yeah, see that. That's a lure. Still looking pretty shiny. Well, it's a matte colour, so not really shiny, but it's still looking pretty pristine. Good look at the lure. Use pliers. Off you go, girl. Yes. Let's pick up my rod. Do the obligatory check of the leader. It's mostly fine, but I'm going to retie. All right. It's back up. And check how long that leader is between my two fingers of my hand. What's that, 15 centimeters? I don't think they care, so I'm not going to retie a leader until I need one. Because I'm getting a bit lazy here. I just want to get the lure back out and get another fish. It's shallow, so I can just vertically hop it. If I need more depth, I can twitch down. A little that bit of, bit of bait getting stirred up in the corner there. And winding, of course. Winding is always something you can do. It's easy. Easy fishing. Oh, that's no good. All right, got it off. Okay, so there are some snags here. Let's twitch it up. Keep it off the bottom. All right, let's actually have a straight cast right now. Let's wind it down. Okay, I think I'm on the bottom. Feels like it. Now I can just keep it there. See if Mr. Flatty wants to come out. And nab a tasty morsel in the form of a... Yes, oh yes. In the form of a Daiwa double clutch. Yeah, next victim right here, right now. Right here, right now. Look at that, but they're going pretty hard. I can't remember where I got it. I think it was like pretty much halfway in this time. Yeah, look at that, just on the last treble. All right, so we'll get the net ready. All right, so we're getting a bit of netting practice today. Uh, yes, all right, so I think my treble swung into the side, so I should have this secured now. Into the net, nice glide. All right, I'm getting better at netting. <laughs> what a sesh. Plastics, hard bodies. I think, oh, got me, got me a bit dirty there. I think anything would have worked right now. Let's get, get, the, get these plies again. Yeah, like I said, um, I think pretty much any lure would have worked right now. They seem to be fired up. Yep, alright, there's one out. Pop that out. There we go, quick job there. Perfect. Get the net out of the way. Get my hand under. Three, two, one. Off you go. Clean release. <laughs> wow. Oh, so many, so many flattered out here today. I can't believe it. This wind's killing me. But what a session. That was red hot. Can't believe it. Red hot session. And guys, before I go, plenty of videos to watch on the channel. If you want to keep watching, I'll put up a couple. Thanks for all your support. As always, and I'll catch you in the next video. What a star shroom is. A windy, bright day on the dirty old Parramatta River in the middle of Sydney, and he's smacking the fish hand over fist using both soft and hard lures. There were a lot of tips in that clip, so I hope you took it all on board and it'll help to improve your fishing. Now, the Parramatta River, as well as being obviously home to a lot of flathead, holds some cracking brim. And if you love chasing brim as much as I do, particularly on lures, I hope that you'll get a couple of tips out of this next video clip that I put together quite recently for Shimano Australia. Chasing brim on lures, both hard and soft. Watch closely. G'day, Starlow here, and welcome to another instalment of Stepping Stones to Successful Fishing. Now, so far in this series, we've mostly looked at bread and butter style fishing with bait from the rocks, from the beaches, in the estuaries. 
but this time I want to move on to lures because I know that there's a lot of people out there that are really interested in getting into their lure fishing but just find it a bit daunting. So we're going to start with the style of lure that represents the perfect crossover between bait fishing and lure fishing and that's a soft plastic, a squidgy like this one. So probably the most critical thing of all with soft plastics is to rig them right in the first place. I've got a little jig head on here. It's only about one and a half, two grams. The lighter the jig head that you can get by with, the more fish you'll catch generally. You want that hang time in the water as the lure sinks. Now, the first thing to do is just to quickly measure up the soft plastic alongside the jig head and have a look where the bend of the hook comes back to because that's where you're going to want the point to come out when you rig it. Start right in the front of the nose, as dead centre as you can get it. And then it's just a matter of sliding it round the bend, not unlike putting a garden worm on a hook. Bring that hook point out at that predetermined spot and then slide the plastic all the way up. Now, that's pretty good, but I'm going to have a good look at it, make sure it's absolutely straight, give it a little tweak. One little trick is just to hold its nose there with your fingers and just give it a little bit of a pull just to straighten it out. And I'm really happy with that, and I'll be even happier once I put some S-Factor on it. This stuff is just magic. It doesn't make fish swim from half a mile away to eat your lure, but what it does is make them hang on to it when they do grab it. It just tastes and smells right for them, so you get more bites at the cherry. Now, I'm still not going to just start fishing blindly with that. I'm going to give it a swim in the water first and make sure that it's behaving correctly. And I'm also going to have a think about what it is that I'm trying to imitate with this lure. It could be a worm, it could be a little prawn, it could be a crab or a bait fish. I'm going to tweak it in the water, watch what it does, and think about that when I cast the lure out there, because what I'm trying to do is put on a puppet show for the fish. And if I can convince them that this puppet is real, they'll eat it. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's not a bad fish either. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's giving me some. Oh, he's a good fish too. Oh. I was lucky to get him out of those snags. That's the thing, you're just working that plastic really slowly and then the next minute you feel that little tick. And you've got to set the hook. Oh. That's a stunning brim. And when you get it right, and you fish that lure like I was telling you before, think about what it's doing down there. Just make it imitate something alive, and eventually, something like that will come along and eat it. And he really did eat it too. <laughs> that squidgy is down the hatch. <laughs> What I'm doing at the moment is, is fishing an edge and I'm looking particularly for structure. I'm looking for rocks or branches that protrude into the water. I mean, I'll fish the entire edge, but where I expect the fish to come from is close to those significant items of structure. That's what they love to hang around. So whereas with the soft plastic, I was having to impart most of the action to the lure, hard-bodied lures have a built-in action. They'll actually swim when you just pull them along. And a lot of people just throw them out and wind them in or troll them behind the boat. And you'll catch fish doing that, but you'll catch a lot more fish if you actually work that lure. Remember, putting on that puppet show for the fish. You're trying to imitate not just a little fish, but perhaps an injured little fish that is most likely to be hit by a predator. So. Lots of stops and starts, lots of little tweaks of the rod tip. Keep the lure in the strike zone for as long as you possibly can. Oh, yep. Yeah. Big pause. Oh. <laughs> the longest pause. The nice thing about these lures is they're suspending. They're only rising very, very slowly in the water and the fish find that extremely natural. 
in terms of a presentation. It's what a little fish might do in between darting around. And um, this brim was quite happy to just smack it while it was slow rising in the water. Another good fish too. Oh, nice and fat. Oh, they're in good nick. And that's why I like lure fishing. Whether you're throwing soft or hard lures in these southern estuaries, choose yourself a nice light rod around 2 to 2.2 metres in length and a reel from the 1,000 to 3,000 sizes. Spool it up with braided line. Look, braid is just fantastic. It's thin for its strength, it casts really well, and most importantly, because it's got near zero stretch, you feel everything that's going on out there. You know if your lure's picked up a bit of weed, you know if a fish has tapped it. And it's also important to keep your reel nicely spooled up with line. Don't overfill it, but make sure there's enough line on there so that you can cast smoothly and it's not hanging up going over the lip of the reel. Choose the right gear and lure fishing is just so much fun. There he is, he smacked that pavlo shad and he's picked it up in both the gill plate and the corner of his jaw. So there you go, there's nothing all that mysterious about fishing either soft plastics or hard bodies. If you've been keen to give lures a go, get out there and have a crack. Just remember the tips that I've given you in this episode. Thanks, Starlo. Now, doesn't that look like a lot of fun? I have been brim fishing. I went brim fishing with my friend Zeppelin Allen and his dad, Matt, back in April this year. We were at Now and Now fishing with bait, and we caught quite a few brim, but they weren't very big. They were all undersized, and our esky wasn't quite filled to the brim with fish, if you know what I mean. That was a silly joke. <laughs> but that was a great video, Starlo. Really enjoyed that. Brim fishing with lures looks like something that I could really get into. Now... It's my turn, and I'm going to be talking about using spinners, bladed spinners, to catch trout. Now, here in Australia, when we talk about spinners, we'll be usually talking about Shane Warren. But Shane Warren wouldn't know the difference between a spinner bait and a spinner. He's too busy playing golf at St Andrews and not fishing. So, I'm going to explain it, Shane, just in case you're watching. This is a spinner bait. Now this isn't what I'm talking about today, but it's what I wanted to show you first, just to remove any confusion. A spinner bait is sometimes called a spinner. It has a body, an arm with a bend. This is an R bend, and some of them have an enclosed eyelet. And then it's got a blade at the end, and sometimes two blades, sometimes four blades. That is a spinner bait. Today's video is not about spinner baits. Today's video is about spinners. These ones, inline spinners. Now I'm trying to get the camera to focus on that. It's only a small item and it always wants to focus on my head for some reason. This is what we call a spinner or an inline spinner. An inline spinner is a spinner unlike the spinner bait with the arm. Hang on. This is a spinner, an inline spinner. Unlike a spinner bait which has the arm, the bend and everything, an inline spinner just has a straight line with a blade that spins and a body and some hooks. Now, this one here, this is a Tassie bladed spinner. I think it might be called a Tassie blade from the same company that makes Tassie Devils. Now, I couldn't possibly have found a dirtier, more used looking bladed spinner than that one. So I've gone out and got another one here as well. This is a Celta. A Celta is a very, very popular form of bladed spinner. Once again, it's an inline blade, an inline spinner. It's just a straight spinner with a blade and a set of treble hooks. That's the difference between a spinner bait and a spinner. Now, spinners, 
are very, very popular for trout and redfin here in my area, and with good reason, because they're very, very effective. Trout and redfin will both hit a spinner. They're not without limitations. They're very hard to fish vertically. If you want to lower under a log or something, they don't work as well as, say, a soft plastic. The upside to a spinner is that they're easy to use. You just cast them out and you reel them in. As long as the spinner is going faster than the current, well then the blade should turn. And with trout being such skinny, skinny and fit fish, a little bit like me, skinny and fit, the faster you reel that in, the faster they'll chase it and hit it. And you can never really reel it in too fast. So you reel a spinner in faster than the current, you get it to turn, the fish sees something moving and splashing and flashing a bit of light out, and then it will hit it. They're easy to use, they usually cast quite well. The downside to them is they're not very natural, so sometimes it can be harder to fool the larger fish with a spinner. You might find something more natural like a soft plastic or even a fly or a small minnow with good colours might tempt a larger, wiser trout than what a bladed spinner will. Now in this video I'm about to show you, you'll see me catch a few trout on spinners and then I find a couple of really nice fish in a big deep hole and they have a little bit of a well, a half assed kind of a dip at it, if you know what I mean, but they don't hit it properly and hook up. Because it's not natural, they're a little bit cunning, the bigger fish, and I can't help but think that if, the, uh, if I was using something a bit more natural, the bigger ones might have hit it. Spinners are great for people who are new to trout fishing or redfin fishing because they're easy to use. They'll, you'll be able to learn stream craft, walking up streams, learn where to cast, and you'll catch fish while you're doing it with spinners. Great for people who are new to spinning, and then as you start catching a few fish and you get your bearings and you know what you're doing, you might then step up to something a bit more natural. It's a bit more tricky to use like a soft plastic. Anyway, folks, in this video, I'm fishing in the Ovens River near Bright. This video was filmed, I think, around 2017, 2018 using spinners. I hope you enjoy it. G'day, everyone. Today I'm fishing in the Ovens River, upstream of Bright, between Bright and Harrietville. I'm chasing brown and rainbow trout. Now most of you will know that I love fishing in the small, tight little trickles that are overgrown with bracken and blackberries. Today I've decided to change it up a notch, fish a more open stream, something that's easier to wade, easier to cast, easier to walk. There'll be a lot of blind casting, just casting into the open areas and hoping that a fish has a crack at my lure, but the biggest challenge here in the Ovens River, which is one of Victoria's most popular trout fisheries, the biggest challenge will be tempting the trout to strike my lure only a few days after a long weekend. We had the Labor Day public holiday weekend just gone. The fish are going to be quite spooked, I would imagine, quite flighty, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much better than this. It is absolutely beautiful up here at the moment. Rightio, first cast into the water of the river that I grew up on. I don't like to cast downstream or fish downstream, but I'll give it a crack. That's on here. Oh, there's a tree up jumping down there next to that tree. I wonder if I can get a cast down there without him seeing me. I wonder if I should have a flick in here first. Just in case there's one sitting in the shade there. There he goes again. He's jumped again. And again. This is a good sign, folks. I'm already seeing trout rising. I've got to follow. I've got to follow. Off to a great start. Got him. Yeah, baby. Nice fish. Where's he going? Oh, I'm not going to get him out. He's a lovely trout, but gee whiz. How am I going to... Nice rainbow, actually. I don't know how I'm going to land him in amongst all this crap. He's got me wrapped around 50,000 trees. <laughs> how am I going to land him? Gee, he's a lovely rainbow trout. 
But then I'm gonna land him. I'm gonna lose these fishes pretty surely. If I can just somehow get him out of round. Now he's gone up under there. Now he's down there. <laughs> well, look, I've got him around, I think. I have too. I've got him out of all the crap. Look. What a lovely fat rainbow trout. I've got him out, but I still don't know how I'm going to land him. Don't go back in over there. Oh, I'm going to lose him now. No. These logs I'm standing on aren't very stable. Mighty O fish. I'm just going to lift him up and hope he doesn't fall out. For, look at that for a lovely rainbow trout. Wow. What a beautiful rainbow trout. Look at that fat. Be in great condition. All right, mate, get this hook out of here and I'm just going to lob you straight back in the drink. What a lovely rainbow. See you, mate. Off he goes. He's disappeared. That was a bit of an epic battle in amongst all those trees and stuff there. <laughs> I caught him on the brown and white rooster tail spinner. I'm hoping that it might just look like a grasshopper or some sort of bug up near the surface. Yeah, beauty. Got him. Oh, I watched him come out and take it. Another lovely little rainbow. Not half as big as the last one. But a nice little bow, all the same. Lovely. Alright, mate, I'll unhook you. I'll put you back. See you, mate. Have a look at that beautiful, clear, deep water. That is amazing trout water. Look also at all the footprints along the bank. Which is a popular river, the ovens. I actually think that just at the moment fly fishing would be the, the go in here. Flies tend to entice trout into a strike when lures can't. Was a full I got him. Yes. Another nice rainbow. Come on, buddy. Another lovely little rainbow trout. Hang on, mate. Hang on. Let me unhook you. Fights the little rainbows when you're trying to unhook them. See ya, mate. Off he goes. Haven't caught a brown yet. I've caught three rainbows in a row. Now I know there are brown trout in the Ovens River. I'm just wondering, there was a spot to get out just back there, I could have got out there. There's a bit of a track just up here and I thought, rather than just get out now and walk back, even though it's been slow, I might walk a bit further on the assumption that the person that fished here over the long weekend, or people, have also got out there, because it's an easy spot to get out. So I'm thinking, what if they got out there as well? That means that this part of the river here may not have seen any fishing pressure or as much fishing pressure. So I thought I'll just push a little bit further and see if the fishing gets any better. And if it doesn't, well at least then I know I've got an out just down there. Got him. Oh, I missed him. He's coming back. No one missed him. Got him. Oh, three of them. I wonder what would happen if I put a straw tiger micro minnow back on or nymph. Got him. Oh, look at the size of him. Look at the size of the fish I just lost. It's a huge big rainbow. Go in now. Go again. Now. Take it. Take it. Look at him. Can you see him? Look at the size of that rainbow. There's two of them right next to each other. A brown and a rainbow. Alright. I'm going to put on a soft plastic and see if that makes any difference. Oh, that's the big one. There's the big one right in front of me. Right in front of me. Where's he going? He's going downstream. He's going downstream.
There's one, but it's not the, this one. There's one right there. Look at the size of that fish. Wow. I've got to follow. Gee, Rizzy, funny the hooks were a bit sharper on that bloody rooster tail. <laughs> oh, I had a swipe on the microbe in hand again. Something swiping it. Look, he wants it. <sighs> wow. These fish are so cunning. They must have seen so many lures lately. What I might do is just put a little bit of lure scent on. Maybe I'm just too fresh after the long weekend. Maybe should I come up here tomorrow and give them one more day to get over the onslaught they would have seen last weekend, maybe. Right, I've got a uh, heap of lure sent on. Look at the fish jumping up there. Obviously rising for something. Oh, I had a heap on the micro you know, Look at this little one. Got him. <laughs> that wasn't the first one that hit it. Lovely little rainbow trout on the micro you know, covered with striped tiger lure scent. I reckon I've seen five or six fish in this hole, and that's the smallest one of them. <laughs> oh, there's a touch. When you hit it again, wow, lots of look at the trout. Oh, trout down every direction here at the moment. That's a good sign. little one look at this look at the size of him <laughs> oh dear look at the size of this little weeny trout beautiful little rainbow trout with these par markings i reckon these little baby rainbow trout are probably the nicest looking fish you'll catch see you buddy <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna break any records with that one <laughs> Got him. Another little wing. Oh, he got off. He goes a brownie. <laughs> Come out from next to this log here. In that really fast water. Whoa! I can see a huge trout just sitting down there, down deep. That's right on top of him. I was having to look over there, then no, he's still there. There's a little one having a go at it. There's a little rainbow having a go at me, Lula. There's a big trout sitting on the bottom there, about 40 centimetres long. These fish are spooked. Rightio, folks. That's it from me. I'm walking back to the car now. I'm thinking about going and chasing some redfin over at Lake Buffalo on the way home. Wow. My findings for today. The Ovens River upstream of Bright is teeming with trout. It is very, very healthy. It's a very healthy waterway. There's great numbers of fish, mostly small. It is teeming with small fish, but there are a few larger fish. I've got that lovely rainbow. I just saw a really nice trout just sitting in amongst all those logs down here. It is in really good shape. Next season, I think it's going to be really good if a lot of these smaller fish can grow. The Ovens River is in good shape. And look at the flow. This is one of the things I like about the Ovens River. Just look at how much water is flowing down and around there. We have had absolutely zero rain so far this March. We've had nothing. February, we had next to nothing. It's as dry as I can remember it for a very long time, and some of the smaller streams are drying up. But despite the fact that it's been so dry, the ovens maintains this wonderful flow because it comes off Mount Feathertop and Mount Hotham, some of Victoria's highest mountains, and it's always got a cool, decent flow, making it great for trout. But at the moment, it's teeming with small trout. There's a few nicer ones in the mix. Today, I've, I've used minnows, soft plastics, and bladed spinners, and I have found the bladed spinners to be the most productive, particularly the brown, sort of grasshopper colored warden's rooster tail. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do so, because I'll be making more videos coming up.
Ah, oh, Robbie, you made me very jealous with that one. I can't wait to get back to that Ovens River region around Bright in Victoria. Some fantastic fishing there. I'll be taking my little twig of a split cane fly rod down there and chasing those trout as soon as we're allowed to travel. And I've got a bit of a feeling that that's not too far away now. Things are starting to open up, which is really great news. I get my second vaccine jab this coming Tuesday, and whatever you think about all of that stuff, the more of us that get jabbed, the closer we're getting to be able to travel. So roll up your sleeve, eh? We're all in this together. Look, that's it for another uh, Fishing Hub live stream. Really hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, if you've missed it live, you can, you can catch all of them. They're all archived on our YouTube channels. That's My Stalo Gets Real channel, the Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures channel, Shroom's channel, and now also on Robbie Alexander's Robbie Fishing channel. Jump on there, watch them. Please give us a thumbs up underneath, and if you don't already subscribe to those channels, do so, and press that little bell icon so that you get notifications when we're putting new videos up, because all of us are constantly working to get stuff out there to help entertain and enlighten you, and we hope that you're enjoying it. The weather here at the moment is not all that flash. We've had a bit of rain, uh, a fair bit of wind, but I think it's going to come good next week, and like I said, I think our freedoms are slowly going to start to return. We'll be able to get out there and chase a few more fish. Until we catch up next Thursday night here on the Fishing Hub, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines.